Hey there, this is Dr. Jeremy Steiner. Now I'm going to show you a short demonstration video where I give someone an acupuncture treatment which made her 10 plus years of neck, head, jaw pain and discomfort disappear using only one needle. Of course, it doesn't always work this well. Many patients require a series of treatments in order to completely resolve their pain and inflammation. However, occasionally, like this particular patient, the exact right acupoint works like magic and their pain does disappear and does not return. Now, a short disclaimer, it's important that you don't try to perform this treatment unless you have a license to practice acupuncture. Please enjoy. Would you like treatment today? Uh, yes. If okay. I have I've done this to... before a couple times. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, go ahead. Tell us a little bit. Have you ever had acupuncture before? No. Okay. So tell us a little bit what's going on. So I was born without my wisdom teeth. Okay. But I'm having pain where the wisdom teeth would be. All right. I also have TMJ. All right. On the left, right, both? Uh, more on the left. Okay. And I have had four root canals. Okay. Do you know which teeth they are? Okay. Molars. Molars. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Molars for sure. So correct me if I'm wrong. You have a left-sided wisdom tooth issue because of pain. You're feeling pain. I'm feeling pain. Dull and pain. your wisdom teeth never came in. Did you ever have an x-ray to show them? Are they in there? No. They're not in there? Okay. Mm -hmm. And you also have some root canals, mm -hmm. um, and they are in the molars? Yes. And are they on the right, on the left, or don't remember? Both, Both sides. sides. Upper, bottom, or don't remember? I think um, upper and lower. Upper and lower. Okay. So we got quite a bit to test and quite a bit to work with here, right? <laughs> so if you don't mind, please face that way. We're just going to do some testing. First, I'm going to make sure that she's testable, right? So please hold your right arm out and just resist me. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Good. And relax. Good. Walk. Step over this way one step. Good. Good. So let's do that again. Right arm out and just be strong, be strong, be strong. Good. Relax. Now, say your name again. Okay. Hold your right arm out and say, hi, my name. And be strong, be strong, be strong. Good, now relax. And hold your right arm out and say, hi, my name's Tim. Hi, my name's Tim. And be strong, be strong, be strong. <laughs> Good. Now, I certainly felt it, the change. Did you feel the I change? Did. Okay, she's testable. We still haven't come across anybody that wasn't testable yet. But don't worry, it's in the slides. I'll show you how to treat that if we come across it. And if we don't come across it, I'll still show you how to treat it for when you're in your clinics, how to make them testable again. So go ahead, uh, stand here. Take one fing pointer finger, uh, this one, good. And I'm just going to start testing teeth. So I'm starting with the upper left wisdom tooth. Mm -hmm. Hold your right arm out. Be strong, be strong, be strong. Very weak. Yeah, that's right where it hurts, too. Let's try lower. Right arm out. Be strong, be strong, be strong. OK, relax. That, that was kind of in between strong and the weakness that was on the right upper. Mm -hmm. So root canals, you said upper bottom or both? Uh, both. Both. OK, I'm just going to keep testing molars. There's only three on each side, upper and lower three. So let's test in front of right here. So now we're testing root canal tooth. So right arm up, maybe root canal tooth. We don't exactly know. So be strong, be strong, be strong, be strong. OK, relax. So, so far, the most weak was that wisdom tooth area. And a little bit in front. Right arm up. Be strong, be strong, be strong. That one's pretty weak. OK, relax. I think we got enough to work with so far. So I'm going to jump on that most. And she's having pain also. So I'm going to jump on the most weak area, which was the upper right wisdom tooth area. Sorry, left. Left. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna treat her for that, and so I'm gonna treat her for that right wisdom tooth area, and I'm also gonna treat her for the pain. So root and branch. Makes sense. So please have a seat here facing the audience, 
And if you, if you guys have a point finder, it's awesome. But I'm gonna show you how to do it if you don't have a point finder. This is just the ear probe. If you look at that chart, I should probably pull the chart up. Can we get that, my PowerPoint back? This one, 16, thank you. This is the tooth in question that we're working on. She tested most weak to that. How to read this chart. It's color coded. So red means fire channels. Gold or yellow means earth channels. White means metal channels. Green is wood channels. Blue is uh, earth channels. Water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> and these, this numbering system is the same numbering system that US dentists use. And one thing I forgot to tell you, a dentist can't actually fix the problem unless you tell them about it because of their standard of care rules. That's the power of our professional license. We actually have to send a letter with the patient telling the dentist that we believe that there's an infection in tooth number 16 or area number 16, in order for the dentist to be able to actually take the next step, investigate further, and fix it. It's very important. Don't skip on that part. A dentist can't do it without us. A dentist needs us as part of their standard of care rules. Now, I put ear points here. So tooth 16 is related to this point here, tooth number 16. I tried to keep it simple for you guys. And I have zoom ups on here. Here's a close up of the ear. So one, I can jump on this tooth area 16 and fix it. But another option is the entire jaw and every single teeth is, uh, is projected onto this area here. So, and, and I also put the color coding here. Also red for fire teeth, gold for um, earth teeth white for metal teeth, so on and so forth. Now, the left um, 16 teeth are only on the left ear, and the right 16 teeth are only on the right ear. So I am focused on that tooth here, tooth number 16, or area number 16, because she says it didn't, never came in. I'm suspicious that it's impacted and somewhere along the way, someone overlooked it, either on purpose or not on purpose. But I'm just suspicious. <laughs> um, that's an important question, whoever asked that. I wanna answer that officially during the Q&A. So now I'm just going to push for the, I'm going to push in the area on there. I'm going to use the little tiny jaw area and I'm going to push on the upper left red tooth on that picture there. Can I turn nope. That uh, yeah. Yes, please. Thank you. So I'm just going to push a couple places with this thing and you tell me what's the most tender. Yes. Oh, mask. I'm feeling mask. That's that's why. Okay. Here's one, two, three. Uh, any of those stand out? Two. Two. Most tender area, right? So now I have my petroleum-based product here supporting the petroleum industry. This is just alcohol. I left a little dent there. I have my cool tweezers, pointy. And I have needles, which you can barely see in this glaring light. But the camera will be able to get up a close up once I have this in. You ready for a needle? Sure. OK. Mm. Uh, did you say you had acupuncture mm. before or no? no. Hmm. Not bad. 
Painful? Okay. So go ahead and stand up again. What's that? It's a, Sean, what do we call that? Intradermal. 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 Okay, come over here again. All right. Place this finger, mm -hmm. left upper wisdom tooth. Oh, right where it was, where that pain was. Yeah. From. Why, you still feel pain or no? Uh, no, actually, it actually is diminished. I'll pay you later. I'll pay you later. <laughs> <laughs> she said her pain diminished. <laughs> Been bugging me all day. Okay, right arm up. Be strong, be strong, be strong. That's pretty, pretty good. Mm -hmm. She was weak before. So drop this arm again. Hold your right arm out and be strong, be strong. Okay. And now relax. Put the finger back here. I'm just making sure I got the right point. Right arm up. Be strong. Be strong. I'm happy with that. So uh, it's, been, it's been a while since I tested her, so I kind of forgot what her normal strength is. Mm -hmm. That's why I retested it again. I'm confident I got the right point on her. Relax. And she said the pain went away. It's not throbbing anymore. Okay. So, <laughs> so remember I was telling you guys when there's a problem and there's pain, it's usually a symptom of low voltage. When you fix that problem, it can change to a different type of pain called dachi. So it's, if she said, well, it's, it's different, it still hurts, but it's different, it's important to tell your patients about dachi, is what I want to tell you. It's normal. So what I'm going to have you do is just get comfortable. Uh, you're going to lay on your right side facing the camera, head over there. Good. This between your knees. Just get comfy. So what am I doing now? Somebody tell me. No, just kidding. <laughs> so I'm going to kind of do it first, and then I'll talk about it. This is surgical glue, I think mm -hmm. they call it. It's just because you can keep this needle in there up to three weeks. Oh, wow. Or if it's bothering you, you can just throw it away. Mm -hmm. You scared? Yes, you can, but if it bothers you, just rip it out and throw it away. Okay. It's, it's nothing. It's nothing. It's anything. I'm putting like a tiny drop. No problem. So remember I told you there's two things I want you to leave with this weekend. This is one of them. I have a slide. You don't have to use, uh, what do we call this again, this type of needle? We don't have to use intradermal needle. Although it's awesome because what I show you, this whole setup can stay in the ear for three weeks. You can use a gold or silver seed, which I get from a Florida acupuncture place. You can use a regular ear seed. This one just happens to be my favorite because it can stay in a long time. Hmm. And you don't need to go into the cartilage. That's why I use intradermal, because the, the acupoints on the ear are just under the skin. They're not even in the cartilage. When you go into the cartilage perpendicular with, let's say, an ASP needle, the chance for infection increases. And we don't have the ability to prescribe antibiotics. That's why this, this is one of my favorite needles. The chance for infection is almost null. I'm not going into the cartilage, just underneath the skin. But you do have to take the time and retest again. Make sure you're in the right point. If she tested weak again, I would pull that needle out and search again and find the right point. All right. Scared? Shouldn't be. So I just put a little drop of surgical glue. Now I told you I don't like ASP needles because they're kind of painful. But I do like ASP Band-Aids, which you can buy separately from Lhasa. Just the Band-Aid. And the ASP Band-Aids are even more expensive than some needles. <laughs> this is just a Band-Aid to hold it in place sure. as long as possible. Yeah. Now, will this pass the problem? 
So how long have you been, uh, she asked, will it correct the problem? So I want to know, how long have you had this pain? It's been a very long time. And you, did you go to the dentist about it? Uh, they just tell me that it's TMJ. Uh-huh. And there's, you know, nothing I can do about it but wear my night guard, which I do. But some days I can't even bite into a sandwich. Okay. So she pain is so bad. she went. The doctor told her it was TMJ. I don't believe she may have TMJ, but I don't think so since she tested stronger and the pain quality is changing now that this ear needle is in. So I would say you need a different dentist. Jersey, actually. Yeah. Told me that, and then I just never rechecked. You may have to go to another dentist in New Jersey, a.k.a. my dad. Okay. <laughs> because it's tough to find a dentist. Yeah. Not impossible. Once you find them, you'll have a lifelong source of referrals. Yeah. They do exist. But I'm going to show you by the end of the weekend what to look for, how to know when it's good or bad, the dentist. Did you ever have a cone beam CT scan? Oh, no. I don't even know what that is. So that's a warning sign to me that she never had a cone beam CT scan, but still the dentist thought that it was TMJ, even though she's having pain in the wisdom tooth. They should do a cone beam CT scan to really figure out, is there a wisdom tooth infection? And I showed you that one slide. She's young. She can still have something like that fixed. If she gets to be 80 years old, that's a life-threatening situation. So we want to get a cone beam CT scan. I'll help you with that before we leave this weekend. I appreciate that. Thank you. So I don't know. Are you able to see the ear on this? Not you guys, but the camera. <laughs> Not all the way? Okay. Okay. So this is one of my favorite techniques, and now you guys have the power to use it too. And if you have any questions, email me. If you have any questions now, write them down, because we're going to do a Q&A after treatment here. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much pain do you still have in the left side? The um, I'm not feeling it like it was earlier. It's not throbbing at all. Okay. It was just this dull, constant uh, pain that I've just had and sometimes it flares up and today it was bothering me and now it's not okay unfortunately the pain went away before i got to treat the pain really yeah uh i'm thinking to still treat you for the pain okay well once you put that needle in the ear in there it really changed okay so say that again i'm sorry um once i put that in there the needle in then the quality changed. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, great. So actually, uh, my intention, I was going to show you this first part of the treatment, root and branch, right? But the pain kind of went away and foiled my plan. <laughs> so in that case, you okay? In that case, I'm thinking to end the treatment. Mm -hmm. And um, I'll try to find somebody else who has tooth pain. <laughs> so thank you so much. You're welcome. So thank this you. thing that's in your ear, um, yeah. So before you leave, you can show these audience what it looks like because they can't see it. Okay. But the live streamers could probably see it better on the camera. Um, just show them before you leave. Can I walk yeah. with them now? Okay. Actually, um, they're asking to have you model for the camera real quick. So it's the subcutaneous, what do we call that again? Intradermal. Intradermal. Okay. Uh, no, so that's what I wanted to say. It's intradermal needle. I went in oblique just under the skin, not perpendicular. That's my favorite thing about the intradermal needle. Then I put a little tiny dab of surgical glue which I got on Amazon. Then I put the ASP Band-Aid on there, and then I put another little bit of surgical glue. I probably put a little bit too much surgical glue on her. I was a little bit nervous. But you can put surgical glue just on the little edges of the Band-Aid just to make it stay so it could potentially stay for three weeks. 
I have a slide in there about treating allergies, dental allergies, any type of allergies. It's a similar treatment with the same needle style. This is my favorite way, but like I said, you don't have to use this. You can use gold and silver seeds, ear seeds, which are tiny and pretty cool, or regular ear seeds, although those regular ear seeds are kind of big. Those are my choices. You can needle this point and hook up electricity, and that works really well also. So what did you think? Feel free to give me feedback in the comments below and hit the subscribe button to be notified of new videos when I release them. See you soon.